All right. Hopefully, we are going to give a, uh, a brief and gentle introduction to Cardinal Systems VR1 mapping. Uh, this first video is really just going to have to do with uh, uh, an introduction to the program itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and start up uh, the VR1 program. Just double click on the icon. Uh, a few windows are going to start up. Um, these are all documented in the uh, in the documentation itself. Uh, I believe that the uh, the little menu bar that I have placed down at the bottom uh, is called the main window, and then the big blank canvas is called the graphics window. Uh, there's a little uh, dialog box here, a little floating dialog box. Uh, this is the uh, a coordinate display, and I can set that to show X, Y, Z, uh, all or none. Uh, turn that on and off. Uh, I, I like it just as a, uh, a quick reference. Uh, the, the, the most important thing I'm generally worried about is the Z, so I've got the Z nice and big and bold there. Um, there is one other window that is going to be started in the background. Uh, I usually refer to this as the uh, the launch window. Uh, and there's a way to, to start VR from a command prompt that will keep this information uh, persistent on the screen after the program is closed. This window is just going to be closed when the program is closed. Uh, so any information that is displayed there is going to be gone. Um, so it's really more of a, a debugging thing and not used very often, but I uh, just wanted to make sure we see that that is back there. Uh, it, it's. Uh, once we start the program, um, we are going to interact with it by commands. Uh, the commands are, can either be accessed through these menu bars, or they can just be typed in. So, for example, if I want to insert a line. I could go to the insert menu and choose insert a line. Most often the commands themselves are four to six letters and generally it is uh, the first three letters of the first two words in the command that you would think of. So if I want to insert a line uh, I can also type INSLIN and start. Now, that is going to bring up the menu keys that we see over. Uh, and generally, I uh, this is the layout that I use. These are floating toolbars, and I can move them anywhere, especially the menu keys. Uh, I typically keep the menu keys always in this position, always in one place. I have them set so that they all open the same place so that uh, I, I know where to find them. But the other thing that happened was <clears throat> a warning. And uh, I did this for a reason, because uh, to bring up the point that this is really just a, a graphics engine. Uh, when I started the program, it didn't start with a blank canvas. It didn't start with uh, a blank file that I can begin working in. I'm always going to have to open a file or create a file. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, OK, yes, I understand that uh, I can't actually insert a line, and it's not going to do, do anything. It's not going to go anywhere, because there is no file open. So let's acknowledge that. Let's end that command and come back down here under the file. Um, and if I was going to create a new file, I could uh, select that and uh, go 
open my training and you know I could create a new file. Uh, when I do that, uh, it has created that file. Do I want to open it? Yes. And then it's going to ask me to uh, set a couple of parameters for that individual file. Um, one is going to be the target scale. The target scale is uh, something that's going to go into the header so that any time that I interact with uh, things like uh, page size or symbol size or that sort of thing, if I'm working in map units, for example, if in the end uh, I'm, you know, one inch equals 100 feet and I want to insert a symbol that is, you know, five feet, then it's going to be five one hundredths uh, of an inch. So it gives me a way to, to interact in inches and feet. Um, but it, it really is just a, a way of translating that kind of uh, map units to ground units. Uh, it's going to be important for things like uh, translation and you know the, how do things relate to inches if something is going to be plotted uh, and, and tying that into uh, to ground units. Uh, our especially when we're dealing with maps, our, our minds tend to think in displays and things like uh, you know inches, feet, uh, meters, ultimately uh, placement in geographic terms. Uh, the thing is VR really is, is simply a collection of X, Y, Z coordinates everything that goes into the database, and we'll talk about this later, uh, is is a collection of those ultimately just X, Y, and Z. So you know, in the, in the uh, header we're going to have the opportunity to specify what the units are. Um, the, the scale can convert map inches to ground units. Uh, if we were to set the projection, and we're we're not going to worry about that right now, uh, we'll save that for a, another time. But if we were to set the map projection, uh, that would allow us to relate those x, y, z um, coordinates to uh, a a position on the Earth. But at the lowest level, uh, we need to remember that we're really just dealing with x, y, and z. That's the uh, that's where everything is going to go. So if I say okay uh, one, uh, 1 to 1200 which in imperial would be 1 inch equals uh, 100 feet and now I can uh, notice that if I move the cursor uh, down in the main window we have things like x, y, and z Again, my coordinate dialog is showing my Z bigger and bolder because that's my preference. Um, but uh, now that we have a, a working file, um, take note of this main window. It has all of the different menu and submenus, things like batch processing, uh, DTM surface processing, uh, inserting, editing, uh, manipulating the environment. Uh, there is also going to be some um, information areas. Uh, this information area is primarily set by the system itself. Uh, there's going to be another information area down here that is going to be more uh, dynamic, uh, dealing with uh, uh, the commands that we're running, certain parameters that are set in the commands as we're running. Uh, so we've looked at all of the different, we've got the main window, the coordinate dialog window, 
which you know, if I don't want that, you know, that is the coordinate dialog. So C-O-O-D-I-A will turn that back on. If I want to close it, I can just close it. We did look at the launch window and things that are going on in the background a little bit. Uh, I can have dozens, hundreds, multiple uh, VR files open at the same time. Uh, they are always independent unless I insert one file into another and then the second file physically becomes part of the file that it's inserted into. Uh, if I want to close a VR file, I can go to File and Close. Uh, I can close uh, a, uh, an individual file. I can close all of them. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this one. And that would, if I had multiple files open, I could pick and choose, or I can just select all of them and say OK. Now I do not have a file open. If I have six files open, they are referenced by the term workspace. The active workspace is the file that is being directly acted on if I insert, edit, uh, or select. There are functions, there are commands that will work on all of the workspaces at the same time. We'll get into that at another point, but just keep in mind that, uh, actually let's do this, let's do open, open VR, OPE VR, And we are going to uh, open one that I have already prepared. And uh, if I am, uh, if I had launched this in uh, the the folder where I'm working from a command prompt, uh, the the program is aware aware of where we are. Uh, but let's just go ahead and navigate. Let's open VR again and open up that empty one and now we would see that there are two workspaces active workspace one of two if I want to uh, change my active workspace uh, you can do things like listing them Uh, this is going to list all the entities in uh, all the workspaces. Um, if I want to change to workspace 2, I can say AWS 2. And now I can see that anything that I do, anything that I insert, will be inserted into workspace 2. If I run any commands and say run them only on the active workspace, it would only work on that one. And actually, let's uh, close that second workspace so that we only have one open. And now we can see that um, we are down to one workspace and anything that we do will happen to that workspace. Uh, that's probably a good place to leave it for now and we'll come back and start interacting with some of the entities.